I goofed around a little bit when I made the red back video where I put it in resin to turn it into an objective marker. What I should probably do now is make an interesting and educational video as an introduction to using resin to add some effects and some entertainment to your battlefield. Working with resin can be really easy and it can look awesome. I've used it before for terrain pieces, like a murky swamp, or for adding a different special effect to my own minis, whether it be on the base or some slime, goo, blood or oil as a special effect. My goal for today is to find something to make it small and eye-catching to add to a really dark setting like a 40k boarding action. Alright, let's come up with a plan and we'll dive straight in. Alright, let me spitball some ideas for a minute here. Time spent planning is never wasted. So we're working with resin, so I'm picturing either a water or some kind of liquid. Um, it'll be, I don't know, maybe like a science lab experiment or a character in a healing chamber or a good old fashioned vat of acid, something like that. Looking at my model should help. I've said that I want the piece to be small, so small model. Sorry, Morty. I don't want us to be forking out big money for something we're practicing on that will be a background piece of terrain. I thought of something, if you're in the hobby with a mate, then swap a model with them. You can come up with your own design each in secrecy, work on it, and then at your next games day, reveal what you've made. You'll have a terrain piece or an objective marker that tells a story about the armies that you both play that you can use in your narrative games. Yeah, I like that. The model's going to be held in resin, and I'm going to talk soon about adding some colour to the resin. So, what this means is you don't need an amazing paint job for your miniature. If you are going to paint one, give it some love, but save your kick flips, your ollies and your handstands for a mini that's going to be in your display army. I'm going to take an opportunity here to cut a corner and use a model that I already have painted. I've just got to think about some small models that are already painted that could work. I've got, look here in the room, Gretchen. Cultus. What have I got with orcs? I have squigs. Okay, that would be hilarious. Uh, I've got an idea for squigs, I'll come back to that. Uh, and lots of tyranids. Turns out I had an odd number of hormigaunts because I sacrificed a couple of them to my greater demons. The kids. They wanted to paint and play with a couple, so if another one went missing, well, maybe he wouldn't be missed. I'm sorry. I'm serious though, I'm coming back to that squig idea because I reckon it's pretty funny, but I'll tell you at the end once we're done with this. The display container that our model's going to be in, well that's how the whole idea came about. One of my boys wanted chess X dice to use as wound counters for his ultramarines, and believe me he needs them because I take meta lists and I absolutely crush him in games. So the dice arrived and they're inside this little plastic container that looks like it belongs on board some imperial vessel. Does the Hormagorn fit? Oh my. So what do I have on hand? AK Interactive Resin Water. Two part resin. So I mix two different liquids together and pour it in. Gotcha. And Green Stuff World UV Drying Resin. That's what I use for the Redback Spider video and the bases of my Tyranids. It's quite pricey, but for your first attempt, this could be what you want. It dries really quickly in UV light, so I would pull the blind shut, pour it on and then stick it outside in the scorching Australian heat and it will cure in seconds. I know the UV one will work because I've used it heaps before, so let's go all mad scientist and mix some chemicals with AK Interactive. Mixing them should give me some cool B-roll as well, right? Often with resin we pour it into a cup or container and once it sets we have to break it away piece by piece, sand the resin back and then polish it. But if we make the container part of the display, we can avoid all of that extra grief. There's a bunch of different resin products and you can buy them from your local hardware store or even from hobby shops. 
I'm tipping they're the same, but the hobby ones probably slap a few well painted space marine looking models on the box, splashing in water and charge a couple of extra dollars. But I don't know. Read the instructions on whatever product you have, like me every time I make two minute noodles. Some will require that you pour a layer, then wait until it's setting and then pour another layer and so on and so on. I'm going to roll the dice and pour in one layer because I've seen others use this product in deeper pours than this. I learned from previous times that I've played around with resin that even a small drop of paint can turn the whole resin opaque and here we wouldn't even see our model. I've used Model Master enamel links in the past including turquoise for my Tyranid bases. I would dip the end of a toothpick in and mix this with half a shot glass, around 15ml of resin, and that was the ratio to achieve the transparency on my Tyranid bases. Consider the colour of your model and when you add this extra colour filter, what effect will it have on the model inside? If I use red, then my model will look purple through the resin. I'm using turquoise to give off the feeling that this Tyranid is being transported back alive in some kind of stasis. Reading the instructions, it says to stir slowly to avoid creating air bubbles. But I was thinking, for this display, we probably want air bubbles, right? We want it to be active and bubbling away to create the effect that this creature's being kept alive and comatose. Comatose for now. I make a bit of a mess here because I'm a Goomba. So take your time with the paw and make sure you have a mat or something underneath so you don't ruin mum's good table. As I pour, I realise that I may have added a little too much coloured ink to my mix. I can still see the Tyranid, but it's probably more cloudy than I'd originally intended. It should still look alright though. The next part I hadn't anticipated was the model floating. The other times I've used the resin, it has started to cure pretty quickly so I could fix some parts in place and then leave it. However here the model is dancing about. This is okay because it will end up being upside down and I'd rather model be down the bottom like it's sinking in the tank rather than up the top. Now that the pour is complete, I'm going to leave it for a couple of days because I want it to be completely set before I continue on. I check in 24 hours later and it's already set. I mentioned how I wanted the bubbles, but the product has done me dirty here and all the bubbles have disappeared. That's great news normally and means I will keep coming back to this product, but on this piece, it would have been a nice effect. Over the period of the day, an air bubble slowly formed up on one side and then around what will be the top of the display. I'm not too concerned and I'll be honest, I'm not sure what I could have done to prevent this. I poured the whole lot in one go and when I left it looked fine. If you know, tell me below how to avoid it next time around. Okay, now I have a couple of ways to add some extra 40k sci-fi flair to this bad boy. I'm dragging out all of the spare bits bags I have and I start digging. I'm looking for parts that I can add onto the tank to make it look like it belongs in a scientific lab on board our vessel. Once I have a handful that take my fancy, I use post attack to test out some display ideas. It doesn't matter if the part comes from a dreadnought, a knight, or a terrain piece. If it looks cool, roll with it. These are receiving a speedy paint job from me so that they match the rest of my terrain. I prime them black first and once dry, I'm spraying them with lead belcher. You can brush paint or even give them a heavy dry brush. I'm just using the can because I have one already and I know it will save some time. A wash all over with null oil. Any black or brown wash will look good here to darken those recessed shadow areas. Once that's dry, I pick out a couple of small areas to paint in another metallic. I'm using Balthazar gold, but bronze and coppers would also work. Wash the gold areas with Agrax to dull down how bright they are. Then a fast and lazy edge highlight of Runefang steel on the metals and they're done. Now we move on to the last step, which will turn this objective marker into a centerpiece prize worth fighting over. 
I found a small battery operated LED light online. This one is from Light in the Box, but it ends up being a little too big. So hunt around for a smaller design, or if you are savvy with this type of thing, you could make your own. My goal here is to hide the LED in the base with a simple way to turn it off and on. The LED is currently too large, so I play around with pulling it apart. This LED operates when you tighten the base, this pushes the top elements into those fixed to the base with the batteries to complete the circuit and activate the light. If I can remove the dome section on top, then the rest of the LED structure will fit. I test the idea and yep, this should be achievable. This might be the hard way, but I'm not a clever man. I drill small holes along the plastic base with my wow stick, then cut this section out of the base to create a frame instead. I test the fit and then glue the base of the LED and the frame onto my larger square base. The last step I've performed is to add an extra centimeter of clear resin in the Tyranid display section. This created a height that then pushes the LED light component into the base, connecting those two sections and activating the light when I combine the two parts of the structure. Ah, cool. This is looking nice. Now I'm going to glue on the extra sci-fi parts to complete the model. I glue these pieces either onto the pretend glass chamber section or onto the base section, but not both. Otherwise I won't be able to pull the structure apart and disable the LED. Good Lord, it's actually working. Time to set up some displays and take some nice photos. You can see how this would look as an objective marker in your 40K games, including the new boarding actions. This scene I call the cliche, sir, you might want to come take a look at this. Or transporting it from one end of the board to the other. What could possibly go wrong? What ideas have you thought of to either improve this idea or to create your own objective markers or terrain pieces with LEDs and resin? This video was a bunch of fun to make, from playing around with resin in a previous video to having a light bulb moment when the chess X dice arrived. If you'd like to see something different with resin, just let me... Oh, the squigs! Wait, 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 the squigs. Okay, so the squig idea that I had was just to use a clear plastic container like this one, turn it on its side, and then create some kind of aquarium or terrarium with a handful of squigs crammed in. I tested it with some of my squigs and they look goofy. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know. If you made it this far, good chance you're one of my more magnificent subscribers. So thank you so much. If you have any ideas, then just let me know. We are thinking of trying a few more videos where we play games and I have some more painting guides in the works. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.